Anonymous asks, what's the easiest way to generate a paper wallet securely? Um, there is no easy way to generate a paper wallet securely. At this day and age, you should probably be using a hardware wallet, not a paper wallet. If you can't afford a hardware wallet, uh, then you don't have enough money to secure, uh, because you can get a hardware wallet for like 30, 30 bucks. Um, if you have uh, less than 30 bucks and you want to secure it, um, a paper wallet is not a good solution. A properly secured smartphone uh, software wallet that's backed up with a mnemonic that uses your phone's secure element on a properly secured smartphone with a PIN number and an encrypted file system is far more secure than whatever scheme you would have to come up with to generate a paper wallet securely. Matt asks, could you elaborate on possible or feasible tier levels in storing Bitcoins and how to technically manage and save them? Um, so hardware wallets, encrypted backups, BIP38. So I would suggest that the if you are trying to store Bitcoins, you do not try to build your own scheme. That's rule number one. Do not roll your own crypto, you will fail. Part of the reason is that people tend to miss estimate the risk of theft versus the risk of loss due to technology failure, process failure, or backup failure. And most people are much more likely to lose Bitcoin because they lose their keys or lose access to their keys or because they encrypted them or concealed them in such a way that they couldn't reconstruct years later when they tried to access them again. Much more likely to lose that way than to lose because they had it stolen. So, um, that being said, you should have your cryptocurrencies in general stored in tiers, so you don't have all of your money in an easily accessible hot wallet. That's just as stupid as walking around with a wallet stuffed with cash with all of your savings in your back pocket. Um, so I usually suggest that people have two, maybe three tiers. One tier is a hot wallet, and that most likely is going to be a smartphone wallet that you run. Your smartphone should be properly secured. You should turn on encryption. You should turn on a, a large complex pin. You shouldn't allow your phone to be unlocked only by fingerprint. Um, you should uh, must require a factor like a pin that you have to memorize. You shouldn't use a simple pin that you've used elsewhere. Uh, you should use two-factor authentication. You should use a smartphone wallet that stores the keys locally and make a backup of that with a seed. If you back up seeds, you should store those in a location that you can physically secure. For many people, that means opening a safe deposit box at a private vault or a bank, uh, or it means installing uh, a safe in your house, if you can do that. If you can't do that, and you're just going to have a seed sitting around, um, you need to at least get a small fireproof safe so you can protect it from fire, flood, and environmental damage. And you should probably also consider using a passphrase, a fairly simple passphrase, in addition to your BIP39 seed. You should follow the standards as much as possible. Standards like BIP39, which are the standards used for mnemonic seeds between 12 and 24 words, um, is a good standard in that it has a good balance between security and reliability, and you should use it as is. You should create a seed on a hardware device or on your smartphone, depending on whether you're doing a cold storage tier or a warm wallet tier. You should then record that seed on paper with pencil or pen. Um, use some kind of uh, cold laminate technology where you basically seal it between two sheets of plastic with glue. Um, better than hot laminate because that degrades the paper and the ink, but uh, that's good too. Laminate it so that it can't get water in or put it in a sealed bag. I like to use tamper evident bags that you can buy from Amazon. They're opaque and once you seal them, they can't be opened without it being very obvious that the bag has been opened. Um, Put it in that, that protects it from water damage too. Then store that in a fireproof safe. Uh, multiple copies, not just one, in two different locations that are distanced from each other. Use a passphrase. Um, in addition to that, if you can't find the secure location for your seed, 
Uh, the passphrase should be simple. Um, and you should give that passphrase to one other person who doesn't have the seed, so that if something happens to you, they can recover, uh, together with following some other estate planning. If you use a hardware wallet, again, you need to back up the seeds, but then you could keep the hardware wallet with a good pin located in your home, for example. You could even take it with you when you travel. I don't, but you could. Um, and you could use that as your cold storage. For the ultimate in cold, cold storage, what you do is you generate the seeds um, on a hardware wallet, preferably with a multi-sig. You test them with a single transaction, and then you wipe all of the hardware wallets so that it only exists as a set of seeds backed up in multiple very secure locations. Thank you.